Where's the science? Where is it? <clears throat> Sorry, Master Wayne. I've been going through the numbers again, and I think I have the optimal size for your cape. Don't worry. But you are going to look like your own bat signal up there. I've been binging on what I am going to stand by as the best superhero game to date, Batman Arkham Knight. And of all the gadgets, no matter how complicated, I wanted to know how the simplest one actually worked his cape. In Arkham Knight, you are the bat himself tracking Scarecrow across Gotham. But although I'm no billionaire detective, I did have some questions about your other mode of transportation, aside from a shape-shifting tank, of course. So how big would Batman's cape need to be to fly high in the shadows? Batman doesn't fly, he glides. It's kind of his signature thing. But to be an effective glider, it needs an effective glide ratio, meaning that his cape should allow him to scour the streets of Gotham much more horizontally than it does as he descends vertically. Looking to Arkham Knight, let's assume that Batman's cape has a decent glide ratio of 7.5, meaning that he would travel 7.5 feet horizontally for every one foot the cape would allow him to descend. This is somewhere between a hang glider and a wingsuit. This glide ratio lets us infer the lift, which is the force holding Batman up, and the drag, which is the force holding Batman back, coefficients. These are experimentally derived constants that account for a flying object shape and range from maybe 0.01 to somewhere around three. They adjust the lift and drag equations to make sure that the shape is taken into account. Let's give Batman the lift coefficient of a rigid airfoil, maybe 1.5, and a drag coefficient of a flying animal, such as a bat, maybe 0.2. Da na 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 bat math! Here's where the math comes in. Let's assume a couple of things. First, that Batman has a mass of maybe 95 kilograms, that he starts his run off the edge of a building at an Olympic pace of nine meters per second, and that he can adjust his angle of attack as necessary, because he's Batman. I know, I know this is a lot of numbers, but bear with me. Just two more equations and then we'll be done. If Batman is gliding, then his speed is constant and the force that is pushing up on his cape has to at least equal the force of gravity that is pulling him down. In other words, his lift has to equal his weight. I'll spare you the rest of the math, suffice it to say that we can plug all of our assumptions, including things like the density of air, into these two equations and solve for A, the surface area of Batman's cape at different angles of attack, little a, here. Don't worry, I spent a couple hours running the numbers. At a glide angle between 5 and 20 degrees, the least amount of surface area that Batman's cape would need to keep him up is a pretty sizable 13 square meters. If Batman's cape is something of a semicircle, then it would look like this, fully unfurled. This is the surface area you would need for just an average glide. This is, it's, it's huge. So Batman's cape would need to be much larger to allow the hero to successfully cruise Gotham skies, but so what? If Bruce Wayne built it that big, he'd look like his own bat signal, which would be awesome, and he could probably bring himself to a slow gliding halt at the ground like a hang glider. But at those speeds, for my money, I'd probably choose something safer, like the Batmobile. Why? Because science! <laughs> Want more science? Check out my last video on how Ant-Man suit works. Subscribe to Nerds for more videos if you want because science two days earlier than anybody else head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for future episodes, head down to the comment section below. Thanks.